It was nothing short of inspiring and uplifting and touching to watch Pope Francis make his way around Washington yesterday, all the television coverage, celebratory in tone, and I can understand why this is an inspiring figure, whether he was riding around his Pope mobile or shaking hands of people who'd woken up very early to be outside his papal residence, or speaking at the White House where many people are there to cheer him on. First ever visit by this Pope to the United States, and I think it's given everybody a warm feeling. But there is also a political aspect of Pope Francis's visit. We saw that very clearly telegraphed when he talked about climate change uh, in his brief remarks at the White House. And so a media narrative has developed, uh, and I've looked at this very carefully, and some news outlets are certainly trying to be fair. But a media narrative has developed that, that even though the Pope was invited to speak before Congress by Republican John Boehner, that his visit here to the nation's capital and to New York and Philadelphia is a headache, an awkward moment, a difficult time for the GOP, but not for the Democrats. And that is just wrong. I think it reflects the fact that in the way that he speaks, in the tone that he sets, uh, this pope is often seen to be more liberal in the emphasis, but he himself told reporters on the plane ride to D.C. that while his remarks are, might seem to be leftish, as he put it, uh, in fact, um, that's a misinterpretation. Uh, and it's really hard actually to put this guy in an ideological box. Now, it is true that a lot of conservatives, uh, conservative commentators, some Republican presidential candidates and others in the GOP have criticized Pope Francis quite sharply on the issue of climate change, where he wants more aggressive action, and uh, the way he talks about the excesses of capitalism and income inequality. Uh, so it is true that he draw, is drawing flack from the right, and I'm sure that President Obama and the Democrats love to have him come here and talk about climate change because that's one of their pet issues. But here's what gets overlooked. When the Pope's plane landed uh, here in Washington, it was just a few hours after Senate Democrats uh, had blocked action on a bill that would have outlawed late-term abortions. And of course, this pope and the Catholic Church are vehemently opposed to abortion, and yet you don't see many stories saying, boy, there's a problem for the Democrats because uh, here they are opposing restrictions on abortion and welcoming the pope who takes a hard line on abortion, even though, again, this is the way that uh, Francis sends signals without changing church doctrine, he has uh, uh, declared a year of mercy in which it becomes easier for priests to forgive uh, women for the what the church sees as the sin of abortion. Other issues as well. I mean, the Pope, the church, totally opposed to uh, gay marriage, which the Democratic Party is firmly behind and which President Obama pushed and, of course, got the favorable Supreme Court ruling. But you don't see much about that. The Pope and the Catholic Church totally opposed to contraception. And the Obama administration's had several disputes over uh, funding, federal funding, direct or indirect, for birth control. So it seems to me that this is a pope, uh, an inspiring figure, a figure of unity, but who wants to disrupt things and who creates political complications for both parties. But by and large, with some exceptions, I don't see as much of that reflected in the mainstream media.